Orton. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. It's a true honour for me to speak on be uh, this evening on behalf of the residents of my riding of Davenport, an honour, a riding I'm very honoured to represent. The objective of Bill C-21, which is what we're debating this evening, is to amend the Criminal Code and Firearms Act in order to do four key things. Uh, it is in order to establish a national freeze on handguns, in order to establish red flag and yellow flag laws and expand the gun license revocation, in order to combat firearm smuggling and trafficking, notably by increasing the maximum penalty of imprisonment for indictable weapons offences, and also in order to pro uh, prohibit mid-velocity replica air guns. In short, it's clear action from our federal government to address gun violence that has been on the rise in Canada and present a serious and significant uh, threat to, to the well-being of Canadian communities. Since 2009, violent offences involving guns increased by, by 81 per cent, and 41 per cent of Canadians reported feeling that gun violence posed a serious threat to their communities. Madam Speaker, I'm a born and bred downtown Torontonian, so while most of my life, uh, Canada's largest city has been relatively safe, gun violence is noticed, and as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's on the rise. It's something that we worry about because we hear about it in our communities and it makes us feel unsafe. I was on a call uh, with my staff this morning, and they monitor all the social media uh, and all the media uh, in my riding. And yesterday there was gun violence on the corner of Gladstone and Bloor in my riding. I don't know all the details, but this is what I was able to garner from the, the news media. One man was transported to hospital with serious injuries after being shot Friday evening. It happened in the Bloor Street and Gladstone Avenue uh, area just after 7.30 p.m. The circumstances surrounding the shooting were not immediately known. Preliminary reports indicated two shots had been fired, police said. The victim sustained serious but non-life-threatening injuries. Every incident like this makes our community members feel unsafe. It impacts our quality of life and it impacts our well-being. I've been listening to the debate this evening, Madam Speaker, and I agree that tackling gun violence is not a simple issue. It's super complex, but, and I think there's no one measure that will get guns off of our streets, and this bill is definitely not a panacea. And it's not our first action. I'm very proud of all the actions that we have taken over the last six to seven years to tackle gun violence. I'm really proud of C-71 that was introduced during the 42nd Parliament, registering firearms, providing additional due diligence practices, providing better supports for enforcement officers and tracing efforts, and a, a number of additional measures that would keep firearms uh, out of the hands of criminals. I know that we've also put a significant amount of money uh, in our, uh, to, our, to our border officers in order to stop guns from crossing our borders, and I know that we've also heavily invested in tackling the root causes of violence. Some other measures we've taken is last May we took the step of prohibiting more than 1,500 models of assault-style uh, firearms and their variants. Um, while the vast majority of firearm owners are responsible, these kinds of powerful and dangerous firearms are not designed for legitimate activities like hunting or sports shooting. They were made for the battlefield, and they have no place in our cities uh, at all. And taking that step put us in lockstep with other global leaders in gun control policy, Madam Speaker. However, Madam Speaker, gun violence of all kinds continues to be a major problem in our communities and our cities, as I had mentioned. All firearm tra tragedies, from the public ones we commemorate to the private ones that occur in the home, create untold sadness and are often preventable. We acknowledge all those who have felt the tragic loss of a loved one and the loss of their sense of safety and security in their own community. Gun violence remains a tragic reality impacting our cities and regions. We only have to look at the polytechnic tragedy or what happened at the Quebec City Mosque in recent memory when a killer entered and murdered six people and injured many others. And we remember the massacre that happened in Nova Scotia. No one should have their life cut short in this way. No one should have to live with the pain of losing a loved one to firearms violence. That is why we've made gun control a top priority, including by regulation and by legislation. And that's why we stand with those who advocate relentlessly to increase safety in their communities. Their voices have deepened our resolve, and they have helped to form our response in the form of this new legislation. Madam Speaker, as I've noted, since 2015, we've made some real and concrete progress to keep Canadians safe. 
we've introduced common sense gun laws, we've invested in our law enforcement, and as the Minister of Public Safety has said, we've invested in kids and communities because we know that makes different that will make a difference and addresses the determinants of crime and violence. But there is always more that we can do, and we must continue to address the root causes of gun violence, to address the conditions in communities that lead to violence, and to target the ways in which guns get into the hands of people seeking to do harm. Madam Speaker, for example, criminals can gain access to firearms in a number of ways. Some are smuggled across the border from the United States, some are stolen from legal gun owners, and some are purchased legally by individuals who have the license to make the purchase, but then sold illegally through straw purchasing. Madam Speaker, Bill C-21 addresses all of these issues. We also know that there are circumstances when a gun may be owned legally, but the circumstances of its ownership may change. It may be in a home where there is now incidents of gender-based violence and domestic violence. It may be in a situation where a person suffering from suicidal ideation has access to that firearms, or it may be accessible to someone who's been radicalized to violent extremism. In those circumstances, we have to have the tools to enable those firearms to be removed from a situation that is dangerous and made deadly by the presence of a firearm. Madam Speaker, that's another important element of Bill C-21, empowering Canadians to take action. Situations involving domestic and intimate partner violence have been compounded by the pandemic. Beyond domestic violence, there are also other situations where a person may be suicidal or has openly advocated hatred or violence against someone. In response, Bill C-21 proposes the creation of a red flag and yellow flag flag provision. These provisions would make it easier for anyone who feels threatened by the presence of a firearm in, the, in their home or by an individual who owns a firearm to take action to protect it themselves and others. More, speci more specifically, the red flag regime would allow anyone, not just police, to apply to the courts for an immediate removal of an individual firearm if they pose a danger. Similarly, the yellow flag regime would allow anyone to ask a, fire, a chief firearms officer to suspend and examine an individual's license if there are reasonable suspicions that the person is no longer eligible to hold a license. Colleagues, as you know, in Canada, gun ownership is a privilege, not a right. It's a privilege that is earned by those Canadians who adhere to our strict laws, our regulations and our requirements regarding licensing, training, storage and use of a firearm. In Canada, guns are not only intended to be used for hunting and sport purposes. Uh, are, sorry, in Canada, guns are only intended to be used for hunting and sport purposes. And let me also acknowledge, as the Prime Minister has done, the overwhelming majority of firearm owners in this country that are law-abiding. They're responsible firearm owners. They acquire their firearms legally. They store them securely. They use them responsibly. They earn the privilege of firearm ownership, and we respect them for their adherence to, their, to, to these laws. And I know a lot of individuals... Uh, not only in my own community, but in the firearm owning community in this country. And I can tell you that they are as concerned with the safe use of firearms and restricting the access that criminals and people intent on violent crime have, can have to firearms. And I believe that they will understand the importance of the work that we are introducing today to keep our community safe. All Canadians deserve a, a to live in a place where they can be safe and secure, and that is the objective of Bill C-21. As Prime Minister Trudeau has said, we need more, as our Prime Minister has said, we need more than thoughts and prayers. We need concrete action. That is exactly what Bill C-21 proposes, concrete action to stem the, t the tide of gun violence in Canada. Madam Speaker, I am very proud to support this bill at second reading, and I hope my colleagues will do the same. Thank you, Madam Speaker.